and welcome. Very glad you could be with us tonight. We have a topic that is extremely important. We're talking about distracted driving and distracted drivers. And I think if we're honest, we could all admit to being a distracted driver once in a while. With me tonight are two people who are very involved with this topic for very different reasons. My first guest is the father of a young woman named Shreya Dixit, who was killed while driving with a distracted driver. And welcome VJ Dixit. Thank you very much. Um, we'll talk more about a foundation that he has formed and that you and your family have formed uh, later on. But she died in 2007. First of November. In November on the 1st. Yes. A date you'll never forget. No, I won't. No. Thank you for being here and, and um, Pleasure is lending mine. that very personal as well as your advocacy role um, to the big topic. Thanks. Joining VJ is Frank Hornstein, who is a well-known Minnesota Democrat legislator from Minneapolis in the State House since 2002, and a man who's really taken on um, the task of getting people off their texting and off their cell phones. We'll talk more about your efforts um, and how hard it is yes. to push this through, which is very surprising. Well, thank you for having me. You're welcome, Frank. Great to have you. Before we go any further, VJ's family has uh, put together a wonderful documentary, and it's called In, in a, a Split Second. In a Split Second. And I watched it several times this weekend and was so um, taken by the impact of, of watching it. So I wanted to show you about three minutes from this, which will tell you a lot about Shreya, uh, Vijay's daughter, and about um, the cause of, of their foundation. So we'll roll that now, and then we'll be back to talk about it. From the moment you met my sister Shreya, you couldn't help but fall in love with her. Shreya was our younger daughter. She was our baby. I used to call her Toto. That's actually a small uh, word that stands for butterflies. I used to call her butterfly. On November 1st, 2007, just a few months after my sister started a new semester at the University of Wisconsin, she was making plans to come home to see our parents in Minneapolis. I talked to her seven times that day because she and I would talk at least four to eight times a day. And we always ended our conversation, I love you. And she would say, oh, I love you, Dad. She called at six, Mom, we are leaving now. And that's the last time I spoke to her. I was in my apartment and got a call from my twin sister about Shreya. Um, so she had told me that she had gotten into an accident, um, that she was headed to the hospital. The phone rang and um, there was a person on the other phone who said that, you know, Shreya was in an accident and she's being flown to Madison um, Medical School by helicopter. I said, we just talked to her a few hours ago. And I called the hospital and the doctor told us that, well, we tried to revive her, we put breathing tubes and all those, but we couldn't revive her and your daughter. Uh, and she passed away. And that word does not go away from the years. I said, what do you mean? She was just 19. We immediately called Neha. He was hysterical. and um, I think the exact words that he used were, um, She's gone. Um, you're the only one left. Our worst nightmare had become reality. And hearing about the circumstances that led to the accident that took my sister away from us made our loss all the more difficult to deal with. Shreya was in the passenger seat, and the girl that was driving, um, I mean, it was in the evening, and she was just 
reaching around for something and that's when she lost control of the car. It was something that didn't need to happen. It was easily preventable. Watching that, does it bring, bring everything just into immediate sad focus again? It does. Actually, it has become now part of our life. Mm -hmm. It's not watching that. In fact, what makes me even more sad is when I listen to stories in the news, in the television, also in the newspaper, almost on a daily basis, someone else also became victim of distracted driving. Shreya is six and a half years ago, but there have been many Shreyas since then. Do you think the problem is worse in our country than in Europe or other parts of the world from what you know? Well, I do not think that um, we are the worst. Hmm. My roots are in India and recently I came from India. The number of, number of people in New Delhi, the capital of India, that die are, is more than the total number of people killed in United States of America in the whole year we are talking about in a month. Oh my goodness. And the reason being, laws are enforced, but they are not enforced to the extent that we would like them to be. And also, the advantage that we have here in this country is the majority of the vehicles are cars and trucks and right. automobile, most, mostly auto vehicles. In India, it's a heterogeneous traffic. Right. All the way from, you know, those 18 wheelers to automobiles to bicyclists, the bicyclists as well the as animals. pedestrians, mm -hmm. animals, again do cause a lot of problems. I found one statistics which just boggled my mind was that for every car, there are nine pedestrians who are not in the car, you can imagine, who get impacted. Mm. Who are impacted because they've been hurt? Yes. Or someone in their family? Uh, what I'm saying is that if there is one fatality because of the car, there are nine equivalent oh, I see. those who are not in the car. But also because of distracted driving. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Now you know some of the statistics here in our country. Um, and I was, I was very shocked by the 80% statistics. Share that one if you would, Frank. Well, first of all, I wanted to also acknowledge um, you know my condolences to you on thank you very much Shreya and, uh, and and congratulate you for for taking this uh, active step uh, uh, to you know prevent these fatalities thank in the you. future but there's a basic statistic that I think is very very important for the public to know and that is that um, when someone is talking on their cell phone whether it's hands-free or whether it's handheld uh, you are driving at the equivalent of 0.08 alcohol impairment. Yes. And so we uh, don't tolerate that, correctly so. Uh, we don't tolerate drunk driving, and we enforce those laws, and we uh, really have strong penalties. I think perhaps they could be stronger, but they are stronger than other traffic violations. So we should not be tolerating distracted driving as well. And this is the data is overwhelming, the science is in, and even the, the uh, hands-free. It's very important. People sometimes think that the hands-free is, is some kind of an improvement. Uh, the data, the studies, the science shows that it's not overwhelmingly. So and we have people's study minds after are study. somewhere else, yes, aren't we have they? study after study after study. It has to do with brain waves and uh, reaction times and things of that nature. So it really is the equivalent of drunk driving, and that's why this is such an important issue to address. And it seems like such a no-brainer that we would be addressing it, and yet there's resistance. 
I, I know a lot of people don't like statistics, but I happen to find them helpful. And you shared the statistic of 25% of all deaths in our state or country, VJ. Uh, I think it's very in general in the country, but in, the in country. our state also is okay. the same order of magnitude. Are caused by distracted driving. Yes. 25%. Yes. Um, and that's thousands fatalities. and thousands. I'm talking about 25% of fatalities right. were caused by And the, the statistic driving. I uh, alluded to, 80% of all crashes, whether yes. they have fatalities or not, um, tie into distracted right. drivers. Yeah, exactly. we're speeding and distraction are the two things that we really have to address in terms of traffic safety. And while a person is texting, I heard you go the distance for just a short text of a football field. Yes. And you're not then focusing. And if, when you mm. think of it visually that way, that's it, shocking. It, it is shocking. Mm -hmm. Three and a half seconds to four seconds it takes. You know, when you sure. take your you know, eye off the road. Right. You can go the full fit football field at 55 miles an hour in that time. Try carrying a ball across the football mm -hmm. field blindfolded. With your eyes closed, yes. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Yes. It is crazy. And, and then at the same time, you, what you are doing is you are carrying a cannon, which is 3,000 pounds, mm -hmm. at least 3,000 pounds. And it's a loose cannon during those three and a half mm -hmm. seconds. It can hit anywhere. Do we have any statistics on ages? I mean, I'm guessing that most people who are texting are under 40. Um, so therefore, the, the crashes, the fatalities are caused primarily by the young. That Am I assuming well, correctly? You know, I would question that premise because we cannot just blame the teenagers and the younger audiences or youth who are driving the cars for these ills, if, my, if I may use that expression. They have been born with a cell phone in their hand. That's a good point. Right. Mm -hmm. And they grow up with texting, and they're extremely efficient in texting. Mm -hmm. We, you mm -hmm. and Frank, I suppose, we kind of grew up with the different technology in our hand, but we have gotten used to it. So the time that we took to get used to it is not in our favor. So distraction, whether it's over 40 or under 40, I think is a equal opportunity. That's a very good point. Um, and distracted driving doesn't just entail texting or cell phone usage. Not at all. I mean, it's reaching for a sandwich that's on the other seat or turning, you know, something off in the back seat that your child has on or, Absolutely. you know, it's yeah. there. But, but to legislate and make laws about distracted driving in general probably is pretty tough. Well, uh, uh, it's always difficult uh, in a state like Minnesota. We've had a experience with this, that uh, when we had to pass a tougher drunk driving standard, the .08 standard, uh, in order to receive some federal money, we were one of the last states to do that. That's so and interesting. And then we had a, a big fight uh, recently, just five years ago, uh, on the primary seat belt. Uh, this is a, a, an issue that was uh, championed by uh, Senator Murphy, uh, who since retired a, a Democrat from Red Wing, and this was really one of his most, uh, he was very passionate about it, one of his highest priorities. And so it took him year after year after year uh, to pass, finally, uh, I think in his last term, we passed the primary seatbelt legislation, one of the last states. Now this is a common sense provision, it saves 35 lives a year, and yet I think there's been some hesitancy uh, among some in the legislature, and it's not necessarily a partisan issue. It's maybe more of a metro greater Minnesota, but even that's not necessarily 
uh, you know, always true, but there has been some reticence about having, you know, the public sector tell people how to drive and uh, regulate that. So this is some of the resistance that we have. However, uh, we did, we were the third state to pass a no texting while driving law. Thanks to you well, and your work. It, it was uh, really important to do. Uh, but I believe that we have to take another step with that law, and that is to have it uh, enforced uh, more vigorously and to have the fines increase. Now it's just a petty misdemeanor. And, so and again, back to the drunk driving analogy. Uh, if people are the equivalent of driving drunk, then the penalties may want to mirror that as well. So that is something that I intend to do in the next legislative session, mm -hmm. to really uh, gather uh, a group of legislators together, talk to the Department of Public Safety and others, uh, to see if we can increase the penalties for at least the no texting law, which is already on the books. And there are some uh, definitions of distracted driving that are in law as well, and we need mm -hmm. to take a look at those and make sure that our law enforcement uh, have the tools they need to, to properly enforce this law and to properly deter people uh, from this very, very dangerous, deadly, as, as VJ said, deadly practice. Of, yep. of distracted driving, and particularly with these electronic gadgets, we're going to have more of those. You know, they're selling right. cars right. that actually have uh, the internet uh, on the console. So, you know, this is really uh, and the GPS a trend. Devices, yeah. Yeah. although yeah. helpful, I mean, yeah. that causes a person to be looking down, and they're yeah. getting so common. We we've had uh, uh, fatalities of workers in construction zones, and we even tried to ban. Uh, the use of uh, uh, cell phones uh, by the public in construction zones because, you know, you have to get through some very narrow, windy right. kinds of things. Uh, but we couldn't quite even get that passed uh, in the legislature. So these are very difficult uh, laws to pass. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't try, uh, but I think perhaps an interim step might be to toughen these sentences. In With addition, your foundation's mission, are you most wanting to push people to to stop cell phone usage or texting, or do you have a preference? Well, I have preference for the word distraction, as Frank mm. said. The broader term. Broader term. And I would say even drunk driving is a form of distraction. True. Although in the, in the legislative language, I think distraction and drunk driving are treated differently, which is okay for nomenclature part, but they are all distractions. And the reason I say that texting is not the only type of distraction I'm concerned with because my daughter was not killed by a driver right. who was texting. Right. She was just looking for a napkin. She turned in the back around seat. and yes. Mm -hmm. In that process oversteered and then tried to correct it and hit a pylon, Was crashing Shreya the car. Was Shreya killed immediately? I suppose she was because the medical reports say that, you know, her blood pressure has completely gone down. Mm -hmm. And they were just trying to revive her. Mm -hmm. But yes, I think so. Um, would she be would she be very proud of you and your wife and, and her sister to be pushing this? I would say that if cause if if I had to meet Shreya again and ask her that question, the answer she would give would be, Dad, come on, that's, what, that's why I left. Mm -hmm. She wanted us to show the way. So you see purpose in her And that's dying. the only thing that is driving us. Mm -hmm. Helping you get through these dark, that dark right. years. Mm -hmm. And when I go to shows like yours. This is nothing but therapy for me. Believe me, Mary. I can see how the advocacy work would be therapeutic. Very you much know, so. Action, action is good, right? Exactly, mm -hmm. and she was a, uh, she was a organ donor also. I read that. And so. so she was ahead of her years in mm, some ways. That is right, she? in everything. Uh, in fact, she, she was the first one in the family to have used that facility <laughs> to mm. donate mm. organs. And yet she was the cut, baby in the she family. She was the baby in the house. She Your cut butterfly. the line in front of all of us. There and must to answer your question, 
yes, I think she would be pleased. Mm -hmm. Is your wife able to deal with her grief via this foundation also? She, actually the idea of the foundation came from her. Mm -hmm. But she, most of the time is in the background. She does not want to be in front of the cameras. In fact, for the documentary that you just played, uh, we had to literally plead with her, please, this is not for mm -hmm. you, this is for mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. And then she agreed, mm -hmm. otherwise she would not accompany me to any of such appearances. Well, the, the old saying, pictures are worth a thousand words. I mean, and seeing the pictures of Shreya and your wife and, yes. and your home just all have big impact. There seems to be, and I mentioned this to you both earlier, to me as a, a person outside the, the cause, in a sense, there seems to be a momentum growing. I just wanted to hold up just two days ago, put the brakes on distracted driving, an editorial in our Star Tribune here in right. Minneapolis. Um, there is an increased um, number of conversations that I'm part of about this. But as you said, it's still, there's still resistance. And is that human nature? We don't, we don't like to have people put limits on our behavior. Is I, you know, I will just say, um, again, having been an organizer and now an elected official, I'm still a little of both. Uh, I mean, it's still a little organizer in me, of course, even though I'm not doing it every day as a, a professional as I used to. Uh, people in power, elected officials, uh, will only respond or will more likely respond if there's a real grassroots, uh, active, organized effort. Uh, so. So uh, people numbers really speak, numbers don't they? speak. Exactly. So these letters mm -hmm. make a difference. I these phone calls make a difference. These editorials make a difference. And we really do need much more of a uh, of a movement uh, to get something done at the legislature. So w when people are concerned about this, they absolutely have to contact their legislator. They have to contact uh, public officials at all levels. But uh, I think the state legislature has a critical role to play. This is a statewide issue. Uh, Minnesota uh, has to you know, continue to address this problem. And, and this uh, is so, so this is what, what needs to happen throughout the state. Uh, there need to be people visiting, calling. That does make a difference. But it's not going to happen without that. It's simply not going to happen yeah. on its own. And the that's where your foundation Grassroot has level a that you talked about, Frank, this is exactly what we are doing. And you mentioned about teenagers. Actually, I, that is, probably one of the one of the initiatives of the foundation that we go to different schools high schools uh, I went to Lakeville high school a few months ago and talked to about 500 students I have been to Eden Prairie schools many times I've even talked to bus drivers mm -hmm. of school buses and then not to teenagers we catch them young I have actually interacted with six-year, 11-year-old kids because start brainwashing them right at that yes, time and this is, yes. this is one type of brainwashing I condone. <laughs> I know I th and I think young children get it too. I mean I, I yes. know some very young children who are, who are very tuned into this. Um, we are getting the signal we want to put your foundation information on the screen for people Please. before we run out of time. So if you want to learn more about Shreya and about the foundation, um, they have a wonderful website. Thank you. And it's www.shreyadixit.org. You'll see the spelling on the screen here. And then you can also get a hold of VJ and the foundation staff by going to Shreya Dixit sure. Foundation at gmail.com. And I, I encourage people to, to do this. Um, there aren't a lot of foundations and organizations that just devote purely to this topic. And, and we, we want are to support devoting you. even on this topic on the educational part, because I've worked with some former MIT professors last year to develop a uh, distant learning. It's the world's first distant learning MOOC application, massive mm -hmm. open online. 
which is mm. available on the website and we funded it. And it's for people listening to this show to just go there and use it. It's a modular, you don't have to spend too much time. Well, that's learning. great. Um, and also you give scholarships. We give scholarships for, for to driver's driver ed, ed students. You? Which is great. I work with AAA Foundation, mm -hmm. AAA of Minneapolis, and I go to their teen panels. And then we offer $200 scholarship to anyone who goes to driver ed. Well, thank you both so much. Um, Pleasure. I, I thank wish you for we had, addressing this very important topic. Oh, you're welcome. I wish we had two more hours to talk and yes. brainstorm. And, and, but I'm sure that both of you are getting viewers and listeners excited about paying more attention to this topic, right. both personally and policy-wise. So sure. Yeah. And you, one message you. I would like to talk to your listeners. You know, distraction-free driving is free. What is stopping you? Doesn't cost you any yes. money. Go ahead and buy it. This yes. is what they keep saying. Thank you. That's a great way Thank to, you. to um, a final word for people to, Thank to you. hear. We are out of time, but thank you so much for being with us. I hope, hope that this show makes a difference in how you drive home tonight. Thanks for being with us again. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.